Dearly beloved, God is good again. His word is light. His word is life. And so let us pray. God, we thank you that you give us your word, daily menu, that we keep reflecting and thinking about it. And because it is life, it brings us that abundant life that you desire for us. We pray, God, that you bless us now through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I come to share about this uh, group of people that I read about in the Bible and I discovered they were a noble group of people. And these people were called Bereans. In the book of Acts of the Apostles, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 17, I just read and got excited. And I said, if I get an opportunity to share about, I will share about these people because they have taught me a great deal. And in this chapter 17, verses 10 to 12, I just want to read the way it is written here in the word of God. The Bible says that then the brethren immediately sent Paul and his and Cyrus away by night to Berea, the place called Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. Pray the Lord, brethren. When I read this, I got energized. Actually, the writer is comparing a people that receive, ready to receive the word of God, and a people that did reject the word of God, or they had doubts. And so he's comparing a people from Berea, where Paul and Silas reached, and another town called Thessalonica. Remember, we have a letter, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. And now, but when you read the first verses, these people in Thessalonica were hard-hearted a little bit, and compared to those in Berea. But I'm not going to go into those in the Thessalonica, but I want to concentrate on this of Berea because the Bible says that they were fair-minded than those in the Thessalonica, meaning that actually if you are fair-minded, take your portion. If you are ready to receive the word of God, take your portion. If you are hard-hearted like those of Thessalonica, then take your portion. And so this one gives them an opportunity to remember that when chance comes my way to believe, I have to believe. When opportunity strikes at my door, I take it. People at Thessalonica and at Berea took the opportunity, and the Bible talks about them as noble Bereans, as people who were fair-minded. They were noble, having shown personal qualities, high moral principles, readiness of mind to the word of God eager to hear and put into practice. And the Bible talks about them as people who searched scriptures daily. I take pleasure in this. Brethren, these are recommended because they daily search the scriptures. And my desire during this time is to be recommended for a daily searcher, researcher into the word of God. And I thank God that at least I have been able to, to, to read and write. The translation of the Bible, I keep talking about it many, many times because it gave me an opportunity to read from Genesis to Revelation, reading and writing. What a blessed moment that it was, that is, that has gone through my hands. And so these people were recommended because they searched, they double-checked the for truth reading to find out whether what Paul was preaching was right, to preach to find out whether what Silas was preaching was right. Now, comparing to our generation, we have a challenge. There are people who come to preach. Someone is just standing at the pulpit, the podium, 
does not have a Bible, but it's just mentioning things because people want to hear what they want to hear. The Bible talks about Excuse me. The Bible talks about it as a moment here that we need to search and double check the truth. These people were following word for word to see whether they were telling the truth or not. And so, my brothers and sisters, there are three things that make these people that we learn from the Bereans. One, you and I need to make the word of God a basis of truth and the correct error. What I was trying to say is many times people of our generation, we just take what anybody says. When someone is clapping in the hands, we also begin clapping. When someone is running, we also begin running without knowing what the truth is. The reason why people are derailed from the truth. And so we need to make the word of God a basis for truth. Truth has eluded us. Truth has disappeared because we are not double-checking what the many, many numerous thousands of preachers who claim to be preachers are telling us. And so Bereans double-checked for truth. And also that is number one. We need to be accurate because the word of God is accurate. The word of his God is infallible. The word of God is, you know, is for instruction. And so my brothers and sisters, we need to take a moment there. Now, point number two, do diligent search of scriptures daily, not just momentarily, Every day, every moment. Jesus' example is actually when the disciples asked him what he had eaten in John chapter 14, verse 34. He says, I do the will of him who sent me. And this is what we are called to do. Search scriptures, you know, do diligently according to scripture every day, every moment. And so I invite you not to put your Bibles away. Some people think that they are too heavy. Some people think that, but this is the word of God. Do the research to double check the so-called preachers that are deviating from the word of God. And point number three, which is the rest, is be ready for truth if you soak yourself into God's word. Now, you will quickly see the reality of Christ. Truth comes in, so crave for God's word like newborn babies. And so Peter, in First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, like newborn babies crave for milk, do the same. First Peter 2, 2, that as newborn babies desire the pure milk, hallelujah, of the word of God, that you may grow thereby. My brothers and sisters crave for milk, desire the pure milk. The Bereans desire the pure milk. Now, comparing our generation with what this generation is where, the Thessalonian the people from Thessalonica that were the opposite, they will, um, they were the opposite of these Bereans are there today. You and I have to take an example, have to position ourselves. Bereans are, called, are, are recommended for doing good. So finally, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. The Bible says do your best. Hallelujah. Do your best. 2 Timothy 2:15, do your best to present yourself approved to God. A worker not ashamed. Bereans are not ashamed. So do take your position. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, verse 16 and 17, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration, profitable for doctrine, profitable for reproof, profitable for correction, profitable for instruction in righteousness. Now, many people don't want to see this. Many preachers don't want to see this. But we pray that those who derail God's people will be brought back on board and tell the truth and speak the word and read the word. Bereans are recommended for their daily research of the word of God. Will you be recommended? If Christ came, will he find you searching scriptures and searching them for truth, searching them for correction, searching them for doctrine, searching them for reproof, searching them for rebuke? People, many, many people don't want to be rebuked for the wrong that they have done. The word of God searches. And so my brothers and sisters, may God who called you 
and called me to this ministry would enable me to search and read and search the scriptures because in them there is understanding. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding. Our generation is so bad, but it is not just the generation, but we, the people that are, because we don't search, we don't read the scriptures to correct our minds, to correct our actions, to correct our lives. So may God who called you do your best. May I do my best. May you do your best to present yourself an approved worker. I am praying that God looks at us as approved workers, those who search the word of God for correction, for reproof, for doctrine in righteousness. May God who is our father be with you as you search scriptures. Don't throw away your Bible. Read it for there's life in here. It is the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe that you are continuing to do the search, to do research and be grown and like babies crave for pure milk, for righteousness. This generation needs you to be a reader, someone who understands and someone who can correct the errors that are and we shall move on and Christ will come and find us a church ready to receive him. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <music>